Hello Crafty Llamas, in this video I'll be showing you how to Tunisian crochet a corner to corner dishcloth. So to make this project I've got um, two double knit yarns. So these are 100% cotton, they're the paint box yarns that you can get from Lovecrafts. Um, both that I've used in videos before. I've got a four and a half mil Knit Pro Ginger Tunisian Crochet Hook. I've got a short cable in case I need it. Um, I've got my darning needles for sewing up and then I have a pair of scissors. So like I said, I've got my four and a half inch, uh, four and a half mil Tunisian Crochet Hook. And I'm going to be using the yarn held double. So I'm going to be doing um, yellow and gray which um, were the Pantone colours of the year in 2020. So let's embrace that. And as you can see, what I did was I pulled out the middle, but it all got a little bit tangled, so I had to wrap it around the outside. There's a lot of yarn bath when I did that. It wasn't ideal. Right, so you are going to start off with a slip knot. I just like to make sure that when I pull the um, tail end of the yarn, that that's the one that tightens the slip knot. So you chain three, and then you're going to um, Tunisian simple stitch into the back of the second hump of your chain. So that means you turn your chain over. And then the second hump is this one here and there. So I'm just gonna go into the back of there. Pull up a loop. Got one, and then I'm going to do that in the next one as well, which is right next to your slip stitch. So that one can be a little bit tight, but that's fine, don't worry. And once again, oh, split my arm, that's not great, is it? Try that again. Okay. So you'll have three loops on your hook, and then you're just going to return pass as you would usually. So yarn over, pull three, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. There we are. Right. So the next thing you are going to do is you are going to Tunisian simple stitch into the space before the first vertical bar. So what that means is, um, let me zoom in to show you. So this is a way of increasing, uh, where you'd increase on the outside to kind of give it that V effect. Right, so to find the space before your next vertical bar. Here is your next vertical bar that you would naturally pick up. So the space before that, if you just pull your work apart, you can see that there's a space here and a space there. So you want to go into the one next to the start of your row. So this one here. So we're just gonna pop our hook in there, pull up a loop, and there you have it, that is your increase. You're then going to pick up the next bar, yarn over and pull three, and then the next one is you want to find that space before your next, um, between the vertical bar that you've just pulled up and your last stitch. So once again, this can be quite fiddly, so it's a case of pulling out your yarn a little bit, pulling at your work to find that gap, mine's there. So I'm gonna pop my hook in, Yarn over and pull three. And then I'm going to go into my last stitch. And as I have said before, I like to pick up both the uh, both sides of the stitch of the last one because it creates a really nice V effect. So it's just quite tight. Pop it over like so. Pull it through. I've made this really tight so far. And there we have it. So um, at the end of your second row, you will have five loops on your hook and it should look something like that. So next you're just going to do your standard um, return pass. So you're going to yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and once again, yarn over, pull through two, like so. Right. Once again, so your row 
your next rows are exactly the same as that where you just increase by two stitches each time one on each side so it's always going to be before your very last stitch and before you pick up your first vertical bar and you basically carry on doing that until you have as many stitches as you would like your dishcloth to be wide so don't forget this is going diagonally so pull out my work again I've got a nice big gap there to go into I'm going to insert my hook pull up my loops and then I'm going to pick up my next vertical bar here on over pull three and I'm going to pull up my next bar here on over just be careful not to slip off that picked up stitch and then you're just going to carry on So I've currently got one, two, three, four. So I've got five and then my next stitch is there. So I just need to pull it out so that I can increase find that gap, put my hook in, pull it through. Like so, and then pick up that last vertical bar. Make sure you get on both sides of that stitch. There we go. And pull through like that. There we are. So I should have seven on my hook. Two, four, six, seven. So I'm going to yarn over, pull through one for my return pass, and then yarn over, return, uh, pull through two. So you can see that it's starting to take shape. And you just carry on in this fashion. Like I said, I'll come back here when I've got 25 stitches in total and I'll show you what it looks like. So I've come back to you here. So I've just carried on increasing until I've reached the kind of desired um, size. So if you measure your edge here, um, that will be the size of your finished dish dishcloth. So mine is approximately 15 centimetres and that has taken me to a total of 33 stitches on my crochet hook. So I've just done the final increase, so I've just increased on either side there, so I'm going to do my normal return pass after my increase and then I will show you what to do next. Right, so I've just finished the return pass and so the next thing that you're going to do is you're just going to go along your row and just pick them up without or pick up your stitches without um, increasing. So you're just going to pick up your front loops and then you're going to return pass as usual. So this is just a standard, um, this is just a standard row with no increase. So I've just finished my um, standard row after my increase and my return pass. So the next thing we're going to start doing is decreasing. So to decrease, there's two ways to do it. You can either just skip a stitch or you can do it this way. So I prefer this way because I think it leaves less of a gap and I think it looks a lot neater. So this is known as simple stitch two together. Um, so you're going to increase your hook into the next two bars and yarn over and pull through both. So you, what you've just done there is you've just brought those two simple stitches together and you're just gonna do that um, for the one after you, so the first stitch that you do after the one on your hook and then the one before your penultimate, uh, before your last stitch. And then you just carry on along as usual. So once again, this is just gonna be doing two at a time. So you're gonna decrease two, her row and then on your reverse pass nothing changes you just go as you would usually so let me get to the end of this row and I'll show you what I mean so you want to stop when you've got three stitches left to pick up so I've got one two and then my end one so exactly the same as you did last time so all you're going to do is you are going to pop your crochet hook through 
both loops, yarn over, pull through one, and then pull through the other, like so. And then obviously you're only left with one stitch on there. Then you just go into your last one, yarn over, pull through. There we go, and then you just do your standard return pass, which is your yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two to the end of the row. And that is the first of my decreases. So I'll now have 33 stitches in total. And then I'm just gonna carry on doing that every row. So decreasing one on each side um, until I'm back down to having three stitches in total. So I'll do a few more on camera with you and then I will leave you to it and I'll see you back here at three stitches. So once again, the first thing you're gonna do, you've got that one on your hook left from your return pass, and then you're just gonna pop your hook under both front loops and just yarn over and pull through two. And then you're just gonna carry on. Right, let's quickly have a look at how, what these decreases look like on either side. So if we look at our near edge, so this is where we're starting off, where you get this little ridge down the side, here, which is your decrease, down there. And then on the other side, um, you have a similar sort of ridge just down here. It's not as obvious on that side as it is the other. And your increases on either side, because I didn't show you this earlier, your increases will look like these kind of elongated initial stitches. They'll look a little bit longer. They'll look like they pass, um, they look about double the length of the kind of standard stitch and they're just that little bit longer on either side. And they look identical on either side of your work. Okay, right, well, I'm going to do the rest of it off camera. So I will join you back here when you have three stitches left. So I'm just joining you. What I've got left is I will have, if I just picked up all the bars, I'd have five stitches. And I've just come back to this point because I've just tried to do it myself and realized that I might want to show you just exactly what to do here. So I've got my one on here for my return pass. I'm going to pick up the next one here and then one after that. So I've now got three, pull three, two loops, there we go, I've now got that one. So I've now got two loops on my hook and then I'm just gonna pick up this one and then the one right at the end here, like I usually would, like so, but just make sure that you do remember to pull that through both like that. And then you yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So, and then you're just going to bind off. So you're going to have a total of just those two stitches. Nope, three stitches, one, two, and then your last one on the end, like so. So those would be your three. Um, all you're going to do is you're going to bind off those three. So to bind off, what you do is you um, kind of insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through two. And then you just do it with the same with the next one. So obviously you've just done this one. So here is your next one, which is one just on the edge. So you're just gonna yarn over like so, pull up, and pull through again, like so. Oh, if I can get that to go through, like that. And that, is that. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to get the scissors, which aren't in there. Here we are. And cut my yarn, leave a nice long tail. I'm just going to, um, I'm actually just going to pull through. There we are. So I've just pulled that through. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my darning needles here. Seven 
and just sew in this end and just make sure you do it nice and securely because um, you don't want it coming undone so it might be an idea to tie a knot in it as well further in once you've kind of got it down a little bit. I'm just taking it in the opposite direction to the curl although it's curling on all sides so it's not going to make that much difference. Like so. I'm just going to snip back nice and close to the knot and you've got that side there. So you can see already how that's kind of stopped a lot of the curling. Just helps to give it a little bit more um, body. Tighten that slip knot there. So that is the end sewn in. And this is the finished corner to corner dishcloth. So you can see it's not quite perfect. It's not perfectly square. Um, what I can tell is that my tension on, so the way I've done it is this way. So you can see my tension on those last stitches of the row when I was increasing is a little bit too tight and that's pulling a little bit in comparison to the rest of it. So I know that I need to loosen my tension down this side when I'm doing that bit. And I mean, it's quite evident when you do, when you hold it that way, it's a bit slanty, but that's absolutely fine. It's a really good way, um, kind of making dishcloth, not only to learn how to do Tunisian crochet, but also how to kind of perfect your stitches and how to practice things. So this is, the corner to corner is a technique often used for blankets. So this is a great way just to practice your increases and decreases and just kind of get used to it really. So that's it for my Tunisian corner to corner dishcloth. If you have enjoyed this video, please do let me know by commenting below and liking it. We do have weekly videos, so please do subscribe to my channel. Our social media handle is Crafty Lama UK, and you can find us on various platforms using that. Please tag us if you attempt anything in this video, and of course, you can purchase all of the tools used in this video from our shop, which will be linked below. That's it for this week's video, but I'll be back with you next week for another one. Bye!